Hello, good afternoon, good morning. I hope you can all hear me well. My name is Chiara Benetti, and on behalf of ETA Florence Renewable Energies and IEA Bioenergy, I welcome you to today's webinar entitled IEA Bioenergy Global Collaboration on Sustainable Bioenergy, a look forward. The webinar will be chaired by Jim Speth, U.S. Department of Energy and IA by Energy Executive Committee Chair, who will present the agenda of the webinar, introduce IA by Energy's mission and vision, as well as its new strategic plan. The session will continue with a presentation of the new branding and logo, and with a virtual tour of IA by Energy's website uh, that will be made by Luke Pelmans, IA by Energy Technical Coordinator. After uh, the session, we will have, of course, at the end, the Q&A uh, session. I would like to remind you about the possibility to drop questions uh, during the whole webinar uh, by typing them in the Q&A tab that you can find at the bottom of your screen. Um, please do use the Q&A tab only and do not use the chat tab for dropping your questions. Um, from my side, um, that's all for now. Um, please enjoy the, webin the webinar and talk to you later. Thank you. I'll give the uh, mic to Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Kiara. Good day. Welcome, everyone. This is Jim Spaeth. I got my screen here. Hopefully, we'll have it in just a moment. There we go. So, welcome. We really appreciate everyone's interest in joining today and look forward to saving lots of time at the end for discussion. Kiara, thank you for the introduction. So, briefly, we'll try to go through these items on the agenda, talk a little bit about the impact of the coronavirus that we're all feeling an introduction to the IEA Bioenergy Technology Collaboration Program, introduce our new strategic plan, and then talk about the heart of the work we do, which is through our tasks. And then talk about international collaboration, our focus on communications, and then introduce our new branding, our logo and website. And uh, then Luke will take you on a tour of the website and we'll save a lot of time at the end for questions. We recognize that with the virus, this is a very difficult time for all of us. All of us are feeling the effects of one way or the other. We send our regards and our sympathies out to those that are feeling personal tragedy associated with this, whether it be health or financial. The impact is profound and unprecedented in our time. This chart, which is courtesy of the IEA Secretariat, uh, was given in a webinar back on April 30th uh, presenting what IEA has published as their Global Energy Review. It's an ongoing review this year that's taking place reflecting the changes due to the coronavirus. This chart dramatically shows the change in global energy demand over the last 120 years. There were great changes in the first uh, several decades of the, ninth, of the 20th century, but then it was a relatively calm period for the last 70 years until you can see the shock that has just taken place dramatically in the last two months. Truly unprecedented in most of our lifetimes. Oil demand has dropped by about 50% in most parts of the world. The oil price has dropped below $20 per barrel for a little while. Now they've settled around 30. And who would have thought just a little while ago when we were seeing prices that traditionally were in the upper 50s or 60s for a long period of time. Air travel in many parts of the world, Europe and the US for example, has dropped to almost nothing, at least below 90%. Some of that activity is coming back in China as they're easing some of their restrictions, but it's going to be a slow ramp up in many different parts of the world. So truly this is a great change and we're all feeling it in our daily lives. So what does this mean for bioenergy? Well, the virus of course means lower, lower overall fuel demand, lower overall energy demand, and therefore with Biofuels typically associated with quotas, it means much lower fuel demand or biofuels demand. 
The cheap oil prices make it more difficult for biofuels to compete these days in bioenergy of any type. And it's also leading to severe economic problems for companies and governments. So in light of this, some industries may be asking for assistance and may want to uh, do away with renewable energy obligations or assistance. But this is not a good time for that. Oh, or additionally, it may delay investments in, in green, uh, green new opportunities and green transitions. On the positive side, it reminds us of the flexibility that bioenergy provides. An example is that ethanol plants have been diverted to produce disinfectants. However, in comparison, that's only a small volume. But it also pr provides attention on green energy and the possibility of a green recovery, perhaps doing things differently as we go forward. It also makes us think about, are we secure in our local energy supplies? Perhaps bioenergy could provide greater security through regional and local value chains and improve our overall system resilience with depending on local resources. So in summary, it's really a time to consider new opportunities, a very challenging time, but a time to pause and try to look with an open mind. So what is IEA Bioenergy? Well, we are a technology collaboration program functioning within the framework created by the International Energy Agency. And the emphasis is on collaboration internally and externally, as I'll talk about a great deal more during this presentation. So our goals are international collaboration and information exchange on bioenergy, R&D, and tech development, demonstration, and policies. Our goals include facilitating the commercialization and market deployment of, importantly, three key factors, environmentally sound, socially acceptable, and cost competitive bioenergy systems. We can see ourselves and pride ourselves on being an independent body, providing balanced and fact-based information, trying to, to deliver clear, and uh, helpful messages to policymakers and scientists and technologists around the world. Our work is conducted through tasks and special projects, which I'll talk about more so going forward. We currently have 26 members, 15 European countries plus, plus the European Commission. The countries include the United States, Canada, Brazil. And on the next slide, the map shows a little bit better feel for how we cross the globe. The latest countries to join were India last year and China just earlier this year. We're very happy to have them on board and thrilled that our collaboration and members continue to grow. And we're always looking to grow more members. So please know that the door is open. We'd love to talk to you about it. Our annual budget, which is contributed by our members, is a little over $2 million. We have 11 specific tasks and a number of special projects. And the participants, the direct participants, include over 200 individuals. Just last, just earlier this year, the IEA Secretariat improved on their strategic plan. It's a five-year plan, and these, these are our four key objectives. First, enable the development and application of innovative bioenergy technologies to provide substantial contributions to future global energy demand and serve a major role in decarbonizing transport, heat, power, and electricity. Secondly, to support increased sustainable biomass production and establishing efficient biomass supply chains based on transparent and science-based science -based criteria, which we're always striving for. And we always welcome input and debate on these topics. We also want to fully explore the ability of bioenergy to deliver significant increase in greenhouse gas savings across all the energy sectors. And in particular, going forward, we want to explore delivering, delivering negative emissions, including through BECS and that's CCU. And then fourth, and not last, but as important, we want to engage our stakeholders and expand our collaboration continuously to pursue our objectives and enhance our output. We're out trying to optimize the communication channels to improve our dissemination of the outputs and increase our engagement as well with emerging and developing countries. So truly our attempt is to collaborate globally the heart of our work is done through tasks, whether it be meetings in San Francisco or New Zealand, Australia, in Europe, China, Korea. We are reaching out to the globe and constantly trying to expand our reach and our abilities to collaborate with others. So 
in the next few slides, I want to briefly talk about the work done through our tasks. And this is just a brief introduction. There are detailed work plans for each task available online. Our task numbering system is just a product of the fact that we've been uh, doing this for 42 years. And the task numbering systems just evolves and keeps counting up as earlier tasks are retired. So what we refer to as task 32 is focused on combustion. Covers many different areas of combustion, but including improving small scale combustion systems, their performance, and their environmental friendliness attributes, and biomass generation for high temperature heat in industry, and exploring various industry applications, and the flexibility of large scale biomass combustion systems. Our next task is called gasification of biomass and waste. It includes implementation of biomass CCS, as well as enhancing emerging gasifying gasification technologies, and the application of gasification in biorefineries, among many different topics. The next task is referred to as direct thermochemical liquefaction, or some call it HTL, hydrothermal liquefaction. So they're focused on facilitating the market entry of DTL products and systems. They're looking at improving the technical uh, standards and uh, shared experiences of DTL in the laboratory so that outputs can be compared across different uh, laboratories across the world and get common uh, acceptable results. They also publish an excellent newsletter several times a year on the scientific progress and market developments related to DTL. Task 36 is focused on materials and energy valorization of waste in a circular economy. We're all aware that circular economy is a very important and increasingly important a topic for collaboration in all energy sectors. So in this task, we look at waste energy in a circular economy. We look at the various technology pathways for waste, for waste recovery and waste as a feedstock for recycling, which is becoming ever more important. In bioenergy, since some feedstocks are, are expensive, we need to take a hard look at the cost effectiveness of essentially free or cost negative feedstocks that might be available. S37 has been around for a long time. And it's focused on energy from biogas. A lot of importance is being placed on biogas these days around the globe. The opportunities are exploding in this area. So it's looking at the integration of biogas into energy systems from various sources, driver success, drivers for successful and sustainable biogas projects, and the integration of AD into farming systems, among other applications as well as opportunities like wet food waste or water, uh, wet water, uh, waste water cleanup systems. Task 38 is a task that has been retired, but it focused on climate change effects of biomass and bioenergy systems. So it hasn't really retired, it's just changed names and increased its focus. Previously, it was focused primarily just on greenhouse gas effects related to climate. Going forward, we've expanded the focus, and I'll talk about that a little bit more downstream. Task 39 is focused on liquid transportation fuels. So it's looking at the important topic of decarbonizing long distance transport sectors with the focus on drop in biofuels. So it's looking at not only light duty vehicles, but medium heavy duty vehicles, marine and aviation as a very important emerging opportunities. It'll you know, study international opportunities in, in biomass biofuels policies and look at the sustain, sustainability as, aspects of biofuels. Task 40 looks at deployment and market opportunities of biomass value chains. So it looks at regional opportunities as well as international opportunities. It's going to take a hard look at BECs as well as renewable gas and hydrogen in the grid. Task 42 is looking at biorefining in the circular economy. It produces tremendous resources in terms of fact sheets and technical and economic models for biorefining opportunities. It also is looking at current global biorefineries and those that have been established and their challenges and those that are emerging. Task 43 is focused on developing sustainable biomass supply systems. Among other things, it's looking at bio hubs or regional systems, or depot concept, where you might be merging several different biomass sources into a, a common depot location and then feeding it off to 
areas where it's needed. It's also looking at the challenges of biomass supplies in the post-COVID-19 recovery system. Task 44 is a new task and it's looking at flexible bioenergy in the various bio or various energy systems and their integration. So it's looking at bioenergy as a concept for supporting low carbon energy systems and system requirements for bioenergy to fit in these various different energy opportunities. Task 45, as I mentioned before, is the evolution of what was previously task 38, looking at climate and sustainability effects. So it has three different parts. The first part continues the focus on greenhouse gases and climate effects in the, in the air and in the environment. The second will look at the other areas of sustainability, such as water and land resources. The third area will look at sustainability governance including the various stakeholders and the various implementation approaches and policies and how to gain better convergence on policy successes around the world. So these are our 11 core tasks. And then we also have something called intertasks. An intertask is a collaboration between different tasks where we don't think there is perhaps as long a timeline or scope of work as there is for a dedicated task or whether where there are cross topics and bring tasks together. So for example, we're looking at bioenergy and the well below two degree or sustainable development goal scenarios. We're looking at renewable gas and its deployment in various markets. We're looking at bioenergy and high temperature heat applications in industry. And very importantly, we're looking at BEX and CCU for bioenergy with carbon sequestration and storage. We also have what's called the special projects, which is the initiative of two or more member countries that can come together separately from a task to work on a special topic. So one area of a task that's just wrapping up is the potential for cost reduction of novel and advanced renewable and low carbon fuels. Another special project that's ongoing is advanced renewable transport fuels opportunities to decarbonize transport systems in 2030 and beyond. And then another task or project that's just getting started is looking at renewable gas in combination with hydrogen in the grid and the opportunities and effectiveness. So it's quite a complex mixture of tasks and this slide itself just attempts to create a little bit of a diagram to show how they relate. I know it's a bit complicated, but looking at the bullseye in the middle, we start with resources. With biomass, we always need a good resource base. And then expanding out into the light blue circle are the various conversion pathways some that study the resources all the way to the end products, and some that focus primarily just on the conversion systems. And then in the orange circle, we're looking at the energy and markets. There we get into things like task 44, which is bioenergy system flexibility, among others. And then in the yellow outer area, we're talking about the systems perspective, whether it's how to integrate these systems or looking at the climate change and sustainability aspects of bioenergy. We also collaborate in many cases with other technology collaboration programs outside of bioenergy. For example, advanced motor fuels or hydrogen or greenhouse gases or carbon capture and storage. As mentioned previously, our focus is on collaboration and it's not just internal collaboration with our members. There are a host of international organizations out there focused on bioenergy that are doing great work that we intersect with and often do joint work with, and we're always looking for opportunities to increase those joint activities. So some of the key organizations we work with, and these are just some but not all, include the BioFuture platform, which is focused on policy and government leadership across the bioeconomy, GBEP, which is focused on sustainability, as a well-known organization that we've worked with closely and often share members and individual participants with. The FAO, which is looking at agriculture and biomass practices. The IEA Secretariat itself, our parent organization, which provides an invaluable uh, resource to us and collaboration opportunities and leadership that we greatly benefit from. IRENA, which looks broadly at renewable energy technologies and focuses a great deal on the developing world. Mission Innovation, which focuses on core research and R&D. 
and Below 50, which focuses on creating markets and linking private sector producers and consumers of bioenergy products. And of course, we need financing. The World Bank and other investment banks are a tremendous resource that we need to further explore and build partnerships with. However, we all know that biomass is complicated. Bioenergy is complicated. It's not simple to understand, and many people really don't even know what it means if you talk to them about bioenergy or biofuels. They might be fortunate if they are aware of renewable diesel or ethanol. So communication is difficult, but it's key for bioenergy being effective in this global marketplace. So we spend a lot of energy on communication, trying to provide clear and fact-based information. So the various tactics we use include a new website that we'll be talking about. We've always had a website, but we changed the format and trying to make it more searchable and easily accessible. We have bi-monthly webinars presenting information on the outputs of the tasks and various workshops. We try to distill down our workshop and reports into simpler, say two page versions and summary versions of the reports so that it can be consumed by various stakeholders. And oftentimes we put out position papers or frequently asked questions in response to key issues like sustainable development or is there enough bioenergy to be impactful in the world? A controversial topic that is often discussed is woody biomass positive for the climate. We also use social media, and we're always expanding our use of social media, for example, Twitter and LinkedIn. And of course, cooperation with other international organizations is key to communication. And we've enlisted over the last couple of years communication experts that are assisting us, for example, with this webinar today. So communication is terribly important to everything we do in the effectiveness of bioenergy. So, we decided in the last couple of years that it's time to update our approach to communication. For many years, we've had this green banner on the side and the blue bioenergy logo with the white initials. It's well known and well recognized and many of us really like it and are attached to it. However, we decided it was, a time, it was time for change in order to enhance our effectiveness. So here's what our new logo is today. IEA Bioenergy Technology Collaboration Program. If you haven't seen this before, at first you might wonder, what does all this mean? So we'll take a little deeper dive into it. By the way, this was designed by our communications consultant, Ed Evans, that has been just invaluable in assisting us with improving our communication capabilities. So the color, green, of course, is associated with nature and with bioenergy. Orange is associated with energy and knowledge. And blue is for the globe. And the green in this pictogram and this graphic is uh, leaves and stand for bioenergy, circling the grow, globe and making a connection to, to nature. The leaf turns around the globe, affecting the, the desired dynamism and growing collaboration opportunities of bioenergy. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Luke to preview our new website. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, is this visible? I hope yes. So my name is, is Luke Pelkmans. I'm a technical coordinator of, of IA Bioenergy. So I'm kind of assisting the tasks all, also in, in their work, in, including uh, communications together with Ita Florence, of course. But I'll, I'll guide you a little bit through our website. So if, if you are familiar with uh, the previous website, actually all the information which was there is kind of here as well, but, uh, but mainly uh, more easy to, to look for or, or to, to grasp. And also in, in uh, a more modern jacket, that's, that's what we hope also. So just the, uh, the opening thing, the opening page when you go to iabioenergy.com, so you see some of the highlights that we have. Uh, some of the most downloaded uh, things like the FAQ and, and the latest reports. And you can scroll down to see uh, a number of things like what we are, the, the latest news and highlights, some latest publications, uh, uh, new events, and an overview of the tasks. But all, all that uh, is also available through the tags that you have uh, here at uh, the top of the screen. So 
it's, if you look at about, you will uh, get to know a little bit of, of IA, IA Bioenergy and what's, what's behind us, a little bit what, uh, what Jim has been explaining as well. Who is who, you find uh, all the names of, of everybody who's involved. Uh, so the chair, the coordination, the secretary, the executive committee, um, all the contracting parties we have, uh, and also the task leaders and uh, collaboration networks. And of course, this is kind of the basis of, of everything we do is, is all the activities which are happening in the tasks. And you, you find again this overview uh, picture where you can see, well, where are the different tasks positioned uh, in relation to like the resources, biomass resources, uh, conversion processes, products and markets, or more at system perspective. Uh, so you can click on those to, to have a look at the tasks, but you can also do that a little bit below here where you really have a listing of all the tasks with their titles. Uh, also the intertask projects, the special projects, and some of the completed tasks uh, and projects from the past. Um, there's also a link here to, uh, to look in more detail on the work program of the different tasks. So what, what do they intend to do? in this triennium, in this uh, period of three years, uh, you can find it there in this link. Um, then you have uh, news uh, news items, so what's the latest releases, uh, some bulletins, newsletters and tweets. Um, also an overview of events, uh, events which are linked to tasks, uh, like task events and task meetings. Uh, also workshops which are organized by uh, by the EXCO, so the, the Central uh, Committee of IA Bioenergy. Um, where you can find uh, all the presentations and also a report on those re uh, workshops. Uh, we also have conferences every three years. Uh, you can find the information there also. Uh, we have the webinars, uh, including the one of today, which, which you can see here. But you also can see all the past webinars um, that we have, uh, where you have the presentation and also the recordings uh, available. So that's also a message. So if you go to iabioenergy.com at events and then webinars, uh, you can find all the, the, the information of the webinar, including the presentation. I think it's going to be available uh, tomorrow. Then a very important one is, uh, is publications. So uh, you can have uh, a look at the publications by date. So we have quite regular publications uh, from the tasks coming up. Uh, we also have our annual report, which was published uh, like a week ago. So you can scroll here for the for all those reports, but you can also have a look uh, through a publication research, a pu yeah, publication search. Uh, yeah, you can you can uh, search through keywords. Uh, you can look for yeah, reports, uh, webinar reports, newsletters, conferences, conference reports, uh, etc. Or, or if you know uh, which task that you're looking for, you can also uh, have a look and then search through a task or maybe also the date. Um, next to those publications, so we have annual reports as well. We also have country reports, uh, which pub were published in 2016, 2018, and probably will have an, a new series 2021 uh, and success stories. And this is probably also interesting for, uh, for a number of people, is uh, a few FAQs that we have produced, uh, and the, these were taking over, for instance, Discussion uh, is energy from woody biomass positive for the climate uh, with a number of arguments if you drill deeper. So we hope it's kind of gives kind of uh, a good overview and it hope it's also usable and, and easy to, to uh, navigate through the website. But uh, we invite everybody uh, anyway to, to have a look and, and go look for yourself. And if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to contact us. Okay. I think that's uh, kind of a first run through the website. I try to keep it uh, keep it short, but I think it's something that uh, that people have to explore a little bit themselves to see how they can find things. Thank you very much, Luke. So now we'll attempt to answer some of the questions that are coming in, and we welcome you continuing to send in questions. So here's a couple uh, questions, and I'll try to paraf paraphrase them. How does a country join bioenergy, the IEA Bioenergy TCP? Any country, no matter their association with the IEA Secretariat, is welcome to join the IEA Bioenergy Technology Collaboration Program. However, it has to be the will of a government agency of that country that initiates the formal joining. And then they can 
involve the uh, work of other types of organizations within their country, whether it be a university or not-for-profit, a government laboratory or another government organization. But it has to be the initiative of a government agency of a particular country that first reaches out to the IA Secretariat. And we can, of course, help you put in touch with the IA Secretariat to do that function. We'd love to have that discussion with you, anyone that's interested. And our contact information, Luke and I, among others, will be available at the end of the webinar. And please do feel free to reach out to us. There was another question about the task numbering system. It seems a little odd and a few numbers have dropped out. As I tried to explain uh, earlier on, we started with task number one back when this TCP started back in, uh, I believe it was 1978. Uh, so some tasks have come to completion. So the numbers were retired and we're just continuing to count up sequentially. And so the task numbers may seem a little bit arbitrary, but uh, that's just the evolution of it. Uh, another to, question to, related. Maybe sure. add, to add a little bit, uh, Jim. So it's kind of a tradition that tasks uh, last longer than the three years. So uh, they, they can be just a program of three years, but uh, most of them exist for quite a long, uh, some longer time uh, already. Um, so usually they extend into a next triennium. Uh, now this triennium, we had uh, two new tasks. Uh, one on, on flexibility and system integration. So that was completely new. Uh, and the other one was on, on uh, climate and sustainability, which was actually a broadening of, of task 38, as you could have seen. So task 38 is disappearing and task 45 is picking this up. So that's, that's also kind of the things that happen. Sometimes uh, topics of certain older tasks are picked up by newer tasks, which broaden the scope or, or take the scope a little bit different. So that's kind of a historical thing also. Another question related to what if topics fall in between tasks? And that's why we've created inter-task and special projects. That if there's an important topic, we're always open to creating a new work uh, program, whether it be through a specific task or through the collaboration between tasks or a special project. So that opportunity is always there. Another question related to crop-based ethanol and 1G. Uh, first generation ethanol, among other first generation biofuels. We don't tend to work as much on first generation biofuels because we feel like the work is fairly well established and, and well commercialized. But it doesn't mean that we could not in the future if there's an interest among members. Well, actually, first generation biofuels are also picked up in uh, in all the existing biofuel policies. I think that's a big topic in task 39, um, as well as in the, the sustainability theme on, uh, on biofuels. So all the calculation methodologies, and I think there was specific focus, I think, in, in last year also on, on ethanol from crops. So it's it's not something which is on the side. There's, there's a lot of attention to new fuels because that's things that... Uh, yeah, a lot of things, uh, research is going on, uh, demonstrations are also going on, so uh, keeping an eye on that. But uh, there is, there is uh, the, the commercial and, and uh, the conventional biofuels are certainly also a topic in Task 39. Another question related to, uh, do you study the resource availability of biomass? And that would be done through Task 43. Definitely studying the resource availability and opportunities for increasing the biomass resources. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's indeed, Jim, as you told, it's, it's task 43 is covering the, the biomass supply. Um, now, if, if you look at structure and how these tasks work, it, it's, it's more like uh, sometimes a bottom up that, uh, that uh, members of, uh, of the team and, and of the task want to collaborate on a certain topic, like, like what are efficient ways uh, to mobilize biomass, looking at specific case studies. So, so it's more about case studies in, in, uh, in a lot of uh, circumstances and less about giving a, a global picture on how, mass, how much biomass is available. I think that's, uh, there's other ways that uh, this can be done, but, but of course we try to link to those as well. Now the question was about 
past work in these tasks. So each uh, task has their own website that's directly linked to the IEA Bioenergy Center website. And the tasks keep a long history of their work products so that should be available. And if you're looking for something specific and not finding it, you can reach out to the task leaders whose contact information would be available uh, on the websites to help you search for these uh, resources. Now the question asks, can researchers join or initiate any tasks? And is there a funding call? Uh, the researchers would have to work through existing tasks uh, there's always availability for collaboration. So uh, without a doubt, there's opportunities that uh, are out there. I would recommend that you just reach out to the task that you are most closely aligned technically with. And uh, I'm sure they'll put you in touch with uh, the right people to help discuss those opportunities. I see a question here on the, the tagline technology collaboration program, uh, which uh, gives the impression that we're very much technology focused. Um, well, it's, it's kind of the, the, the umbrella name that IEA gives to uh, what I previously called implementing agreements of, uh, and they're all uh, technology related. So our technology is really bioenergy. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the work that we're doing in IEA Bioenergy is it's, it's it's just technology focused. So we, we try to go further uh, to everything which is concerned with bioenergy. So it includes sustainability, it includes uh, uh, biomass mobilization, uh, also social aspects are, are covered uh, in some of the tasks. So it's, it's kind of broader than technology only. Of course, there's other TCPs, other technology collaboration programs who really focus on technology research, but in, in our case, it's a little bit broader. Now the question relates to bioenergy and the circular economy. As I mentioned previously, there are two different tasks that specifically are touching on the circular economy. That would be the, the waste task, number uh, 36, as well as the biorefining task, number 42. But Looking at circular economy opportunities is a, a, a theme that's common to most of the tasks these days. So it's definitely front and center in our minds and in our focus. Another question asks about the SCAR group linked to the European Commission. I'm not familiar with that term, Luke, perhaps you are, but we do. The European Commission is a member, and so opportunities to work with the European Commission are inherent in our current uh, membership. Yeah. So what, what was the specific question, Jim? Yes. Is there the ability to establish collaboration with any SCAR groups linked to the European oh. Commission? SCAR groups. I don't know what that acronym stands for. Yeah, I think SCAR it's groups. related to agricultural research. I think. Um, yeah, usually the, the, the members of the SCAR groups are also, uh, well, members of a certain, certain member state uh, of, of, uh, European member states. So in that sense, uh, if the country is a member of IA Bioenergy and those experts are, uh, can really link to, uh, to the tasks where they are involved in. So that's, that's not a problem. Um, and also, yeah, European Commission is a member of IA Bioenergy. So can, they can also steer a little bit to, uh, to what they uh, feel as, as uh, are very important topics. So that's uh, also on their agenda. But it's, it's more a country thing. So I think the SCAR groups uh, have to look more at, uh, at the country members and go through that one. Another question asks about lignin valorization. Mm -hmm. I think that work could probably be done through possibly task 39, which looks at biofuels and of course lignin might be a byproduct of biofuels production, as well, well as task 42, which looks yeah. at different opportunities. Yeah. Bio yeah. product opportunities. I think if you look at uh, the combination of, of uh, biofuels, bioenergy, and then uh, lignin as a, as a valorization of materials, that's, that's certainly covered in, in task 42 on uh, a refining. questions, please feel free to keep sending them in. I, I see here, do you have uh, 
academic publications or just uh, just IEA publications. Um, it all depends on the projects that the tasks have. So usually it's a collaborative project uh, between different members of, of a task and they, they write a report together, which we publish on our website. Uh, but in a number of cases, it's also collaboration on scientific level where they, they try to go for journal papers. So it's, it's, it's kind of a parallel thing as well. Um, but yeah, we, we now try to have as much as possible open access papers because of course we want to broaden uh, our reach out and also present, uh, distribute these messages uh, quite widely. So, uh, so we, we do uh, stimulate open access, but, but it's something that's also going on because a lot of scientists are also member of, uh, of the network. Now the question is what do you consider to be the top priority R&D needs for bioenergy? We think there are many, and that's why our, our tasks are actually defined around what we see as key research needs. So they're very broad. They cover the length of the, ta the breadth of the tasks. And also as we see holes in our tasks in emerging priorities, that's where we create special projects or intertask projects. So the, the list is really long, but essentially it's tied to our tasks is where we see the priorities. And also we provided uh, the priorities, our main priorities in the strategic objectives for this, these next five years, of course. Sure, high level priorities, yes. Yeah. Another question is how do you collaborate with the private sector to ensure real world relevance? We are always, uh, well, we invite pri the private sector to participate with us in the tasks and the research. And we're always looking for opportunities. We consider our door open and we are reaching out to them, but our door is open for working with companies in these various uh, tasks. We would always love to expand our uh, impact with the private sector. Additionally, we work with other international organizations that may be more private sector oriented, like below 50 or the World Business Council on Sustainable Development that are more directly tied to the private sector we're trying to create those linkages. But if anyone has other ideas, I please feel free to reach out to me directly. I'd love to talk about it. Um, Another question says, what is the current status of co firing biomass with coal projects around the world? Uh, I can't give an easy answer to that, but that would cover come under a task 32, which is a combustion task. Uh, I know they've studied that topic and I believe they put out some reports on that subject. So I would refer you to their website. Yeah. Yeah, it's also something that they, they covered. They, they actually had a, a higher focus in the past on, uh, on coal firing, but, uh, but they did cover it. Uh, and there's also collaboration uh, in terms of coal firing then uh, with another TCP, which is called uh, Clean Coal. So IEA Clean Coal. Um, we do notice that, um, well, the use of coal is, is kind of going down in, in Europe uh, and, and North America, uh, but it is really picking up in, in Asia. So I think there uh, the issue of coal firing can, uh, can really pop up. So it can, can really become more important in the future again, I think. There was a comment uh, from Claudia Gutierrez Antonio from Mexico, which is Gracias, uh, saying greetings from Mexico and we're excited to collaborate with you. I just wanna send a shout out and a welcome. We've had some communications with Mexico for the last couple of years. We'd love to re-engage. We'd love to see Mexico uh, join us as a member. So please, let's uh, start that dialogue. Now the question is from a company bio to oil uh, dot uh, DK as in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, task 32 or not, excuse me, task 34 is working on DTL and HTL. Please feel free to reach out to those individuals. They would love to talk to you. They're uh, trying to do the cutting edge research and make sure that they're aware of the cutting edge industry research, but also trying to provide valuable assistance to the industry when it comes to, for example, testing mm -hmm. protocols. Okay, and, and, reach out to them. And, and Denmark is a member of task 34 on, uh, on, on HDL specifically also. So uh, you, 
can look for uh, the representative of Denmark in, in task 34. And, and if, if a country is a member and, and uh, of course you have a national team leader, which is normally uh, you, uh, joining the, the task meetings, but they can reach out to anyone in, in their country. So I think that would be a good idea to, uh, to contact the national team leader, which is I think on the website of, uh, of task 34, you could be able to find it. Now the question is, when will task 43 be finished, which is the bio, uh, bioenergy resource, or biomass feedstock task? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it's going to be finished anytime soon. That's, we need to create more and more resources and make them more cost effective. And of course, make sure that they're sustainable, environmentally friendly. So a lot of work to be done there. And if that's an interest area for you, please feel free to reach out to them. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure that because, well, we have a three-year program. So every task officially finishes by the end of 2021, but uh, we're already working on the continuation and uh, biomass resources is, is really a crucial part of the whole story. So that's uh, uh, almost certain that it will be continued. Yeah. Question is, is there any ongoing project in South America? Uh, Brazil is a very strong member and has been an active member for a long time. So there are uh, members, task members from Brazil that are involved in many of the projects and we're always looking to expand our collaboration in South America. So we'd love to talk to you about that. There's also a question from Turkey. We've had some discussions with Turkey joining over the years. We'd love to continue those discussions. And so if there's a uh, government center in Turkey that would like to reach out to us, please, uh, please do get in touch with us. Yeah, I see here uh, a comment that uh, bio bioeconomy is suffering from communications failures. So, yeah, in indeed, we see a lot of media messages coming out with with rather strong messages, uh, kind of kind of uh, activist messages against. Um, so we try to put in a, a more nuanced view in in the debate. I think that's that's a, a very important task uh, from our side. Um, and now it specifically goes through the task 45, which is about sustainability. And they, they also look into yeah, what are misconceptions uh, in the media and how can we provide answers to that. But uh, I think it's very, very timely and uh, very important that we do that. Question asks if private companies can be part of the TCP. They can't join as a member, but we're always looking to collaborate with private companies in these various tasks. So we're always open to that. And many uh, companies have worked with us and we're always looking to expand that. So please feel free to reach out to us if you represent a, provide, a private company that would like to work with us. Now the question is, are there any collaborative projects in India? India just joined uh, last year and is ramping up their participation. So currently we don't have projects in India, but we're very excited about engaging with them more and getting projects going in India and collaborate projects between other countries in India. Uh, there's a question above there, uh, which was focused in on, on Sub-Saharan Africa and other low income, Afri income countries. Um, and traditional biomass. Um, of course, our focus is, is kind of moving away from traditional biomass, going to more to, to modern bioenergy uh, with uh, sustainability requirements and things like that. But we realize that, uh, that there is huge problems and, and this, this is a huge share also of the energy provision in, in a number of countries. Um, South Africa is a member of IA Bioenergy, but we, we do, we would really welcome also other countries uh, in that region um to also join because uh and and then you can also put it on the agenda or on our agenda to uh to look deeper into the topic another question asked about task 39 which focuses on transportation biofuels particularly related related to marine fuels as if you're studying this topic you know there are many 
different alternatives that are being studied to decarbonize marine fuels. I don't think there's a single best alternative that has been basically uh, defined yet. But TAS 39 is going to continue to study that subject. And so there are opportunities there to engage with TAS 39 in that analysis. It's a very interesting and important challenge area like aviation that TAS 39 will also study. We don't have a specific task on algae biomass, but TAS 39 also has studied that topic. And we've debated whether to start a new task on algae and that opportunity will be there in the next uh, triennium, which we're formulating ideas for right now. So if there's great interest in algae, that's really an opportunity for members to decide to start a new task on algae. Many of our projects also publish reports on best practices in these various technology areas or best practices related to policies broadly. So that's an ongoing theme and a very important output that we're trying to uh, support and provide good science-based evidence yeah. to um, help create successful policies. Yeah, we, we now also have this, um, this inter-task project uh, looking into the role of bioenergy in, in future well below two worlds. Uh, uh, and I think that also fits there. So, uh, so really to look into what, what are the opportunities? What is the role really of bioenergy? Uh, what types of bioenergy do we really see as, as very important ones? So uh, I think that's, that's something that's really uh, high on the agenda as well. There's a question about a three-year plan. Our strategic plan is actually a five-year plan that was just kicked off this year. It's a bit confusing, but our task, our work plans are defined on three-year cycles. So we are smack in the middle of one three-year cycle, the years 2019 to 2021 cycle. But as we're midway through that cycle, we are already starting to brainstorm what should be the next set of work plans for the following three-year cycle. So uh, those opportunities are there for providing new tasks and a strategic focus going on. Yeah, and and there is there is some flexibility, of course, in in the task programs to uh, uh, because of circumstances and COVID is I think is is one of those. Uh, we see a number of tasks picking up uh, certain certain issues that they say, well, what would be the impact of COVID, for instance, on on. Uh, um, on the on biomass resources or mobilization of biomass, so so that's that's also happening. So it's it's not completely fixed in stone what they are doing. They also have flexibility to deal with a number of uh, things which pop up pop up. Another question asked about byproducts from biomass combustion, fly ash, for example, that would come under task thirty-two. I'm sure they may have to talk to you about that under combustion task. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I already published some reports uh, related to uh, to ashes. Uh, so uh, you can also look at the website, what's there already, and, and maybe there will be some work, further work in future as well. Yes. Another question asked about uh, bioproduct or biochemical development. That would fall under our task 42, a biorefining task. So they are interested in looking at various bioproduct opportunities. IV linic acid is definitely one that has been mentioned many times as a high priority potential output product. Another individual is commenting about the innovation in the 1G ethanol plants, which I agree is often underappreciated and it is ongoing and evolving. In fact, I've talked to, with many companies that are 1G companies originally, but I've worked in 1.5G or 2G technologies and have learned things that they've plowed back into their 1G plants to improve their efficiency and um, financial um, payback. So mm -hmm. that industry continues to evolve and it's a very vibrant industry. Yeah, yeah, we, we see very interesting evolutions also in, in what they call conventional, but they're not so conventional anymore because they turn into to biorefineries. Uh, for instance, in Europe, we see a really decreasing um, greenhouse gas balance of, of uh, so a much better greenhouse gas balance of, of the newer ethanol plants uh, in the way that they organize everything and also in the way that they 
uh, produce the heat that I need. Uh, next to that, you also have evolutions like CO2 capture, uh, which will have a very important impact in the, that industry. So, uh, so indeed, these are things which, uh, um, which need to be picked up. Um, if you talk about really converting into biorefinery and, and producing ethanol as well as products, uh, there are some fact sheets, I think, from, uh, from task 42, so the biorefining task, we'll look into that. Another, another question asks about biopellets in a post-COVID world. Uh, I don't think we have all the answers to that yet, but we have extensively covered the sustainability aspects in, of bio, the biopellet industry. And I think we've provided a lot of valuable information and insight into what is often a not well understood area. That's studied under test 43 and it has received a lot of attention. So if you have questions about that, I would encourage you to reach out to Task 43. Mm. And it's of course very difficult to uh, to say, well, what's exactly going to, to, to be the impact of Corona and, and uh, what's going to happen afterwards. Uh, we do feel that uh, with with coal increasing in certain regions of the world that uh, that uh, coal firing or use of pellets uh, in those those areas would uh, would be very important. Um, prices are of course a different matter. I think coal is not that much lower. I think the impact has mostly been on oil. So maybe maybe the pellet impact could be a bit lower, but uh, it's quite early to say that. Now the question is from Poland, a company called Echo Trend. We have had discussions for many years with governments in Poland about them joining. We would love to take those discussions to the next level. So if, uh, if you're with a private company, please feel free to reach out to some of your government colleagues and encourage them to continue those dialogues. Another question relates to policies to avoid indirect land use change. That's a topic that receives a great deal of attention through Task 45. It receives uh, ongoing study and uh, an awful lot of dialogue among the global community. We encourage you to uh, reach out to Task 45 for that conversation. And it receives a, a lot of uh, report outputs as well, a lot of study by experts from around the world. So yeah. a keenly important topic for bioenergy. Yeah, but we had some collaboration also with uh, FAO and IRENA on uh, on how can bioenergy fit in, in agriculture. So it means that uh, you're not actually pushing out food, food in, in the whole system. So there's, there's really a lot of things that you can do. It, it goes through, uh, well, well, co-producing like intermediate crops, um, like like reducing, uh, reducing food waste, uh, like going for marginal areas. So there's lots of opportunities, of course, uh, but yeah, uh, you can you can debate a lot about it also, and and debate a lot about about also quantifying these effects. So that that keeps on the that's still on the agenda. See the next one here. Do you publish motivating projects which had a, a worldwide and regional economic ecological success? Um, that's also something that we started. Well, a number of the tasks are doing that. So they're, uh, they're publishing case, case studies and success stories. Uh, for instance, the, the biogas task, task 37, uh, is doing that on a regular basis. Uh, we also started that uh, centrally from, from ExcoSite a few years ago to publish uh, success stories. And, and we also hope to continue this because I think it's very important to provide good examples of, of how things can uh, can move and can be done in, in a very good way. We have several questions from Costa Rica. We'd be happy to talk to you offline. We do not have extensive resources for our, our members to go out to provide direct training, but uh, we'd be happy to perhaps help with virtual training and uh, resources that we have online might also assist with training. So a deeper discussion on what you're looking for offline would be something that would probably be um, helpful 
to uh, really take this a step further. Hard to just answer off the top without uh, having more details. Next one is on, on social aspects of sustainability. Now, as, as mentioned, uh, our task 45, which is now covering climate change and sustainability. So they, they look at sustainability in, in a broader way, which is including social aspects. So, uh, so that's, that's on, their, uh, on their plate also. Um, and also in, in the task 43, which, on, which is on biomass supply, uh, social aspects have also been in, uh, in their program. So uh, you can go to their work program and look, uh, look specifically on, on the plans about that. The question is, what do you think about the future topics for the tasks? We are always welcome to new ideas for topics that aren't being covered. So please feel free to send us ideas our way. And reach out to us. We can talk offline about your ideas and welcome that dialogue. Another question is, what is IE's view on the future of advanced biofuels? After much promise that sector seems to have gone silent a bit, that's the statement. Uh, agreed that it has gone silent in some areas, but in others it's booming. For example, on the oilseed side or HEFA, uh, for example. So some areas have uh, quieted down and others are uh, just expanding tremendously example for aviation and possibly for marine. So we remain optimistic and continue to work in those areas and to create those opportunities. Yeah, and the IEA itself, so IEA Paris has, uh, has also published a roadmap a few years ago, or, and they also publish uh, uh, scenarios every few years on, on the the future of, of uh, energy and future of renewable energy, including uh, bioenergy and biofuels. And well, the expectation is that, that uh, biofuels need to grow a lot. So there's, there's a, a big need for biofuels. Um, in, the, in the short to medium term, uh, mainly for the, the transport, uh, the road transport sector, really complementary to electric vehicles. Uh, but in, in the longer term, it's more the, the long haul uh, aviation, marine or, or heavy trucks where there is a future, but there is, there, there is really a big need and that's why we also uh, try to support the, uh, the deployment of, of biofuels. Well, I think we are exhausting our time and perhaps need to Wind down. Uh, Chiara, will you be closing this for us? I want to thank everyone for your interest and your questions. It's, uh, we really appreciate it. We'd love to continue the dialogue, dialogue offline. So again, our contact information will be available at the end of the webinar slides, as well as we will attach our two-page strategic plan. Again, it's just two pages, unlike many strategic plans that are impossible to read. This is focused and to the point, and we will attach it with the webinar information. So we'd love for you to take a look at it and give us feedback. Yes, this is Chiara. Thank you, uh, Jim and Luke. And thank you all for your great participation today and for all the questions that you dropped today. Um, Next webinar is scheduled on uh, next 16th June, and it will be about the development of bioenergy with carbon capture and storage value chains, technological pathways, policy options, and business models. Uh, you will find all the information about this webinar on IA Bioenergy website, as well as um, the presentation and the recording of today's webinar. Um, I wish you a very um, nice um, afternoon and day, and um, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye-bye.